This is a clip from the Red Cow Arcade podcast. Did everybody watch the Gaming Historian's uh, Super Mario World documentary? Oh yeah, no, it's 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 fun. It's always good. It's always a good hang with the gaming historian, though. He's not pissing anybody off. That guy. He's yeah. never going to have some trashy YouTube channel talk about him on a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's a wholesome <laughs> individual. The gaming historian's bizarre Super Mario World video. <laughs> what he's a fucking a, freak he's like got an apology he like has an apology video about his plagiarism and <laughs> he's covering up his bald ass head <laughs> with a beat up <laughs> Mortal Kombat he's tape, taping Nintendo toys to the ceiling um, yeah you can't imagine Norm surrounded by kind of like cynical like co-workers that are like <laughs> puppeteering him um it, yeah. was, sorry, please. There was one line in it that that's uh, sort sort of half stuck in my head, but it's like um, I don't know if it was when like when, when like Sega were trying to bash Nintendo, or it was like negative reviews, but like someone said that they were <laughs> said they were beating the dead Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> Beating dead Koopa. That's how I felt about multi multiverse and madness. I thought that Kevin Feige was really beating a dead Koopa. <laughs> I think it was it wasn't like a review of uh of Super Mario World. It was like, oh, the Mario's at it again, beating a dead Koopa, like because it's the same kind of. <laughs> I think they were say, trying to say it was the same game, but yeah. I just it, told it I just fun. told my daughter, you know, she, my daughter insists on a, a verbal story before bed. And I always have to like reach for like, what am I going to tell her? That's like long enough, but not too, too long or whatever. There's an episode. (laughs) Dude, it's not. uh, Don't put it past me. (laughs) It all starts with a shot of Jesus Christ. (laughs) Zooms out. And there's, there they are. Balboa and Rico. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But anyway. And Rocky only got 47 bucks for that fight. And he won. Um, <laughs> he went home. He went home to his rat infested apartment where he only had chocolate cakes in the fridge. <laughs> and he put a bag of peas to his head and he cried himself to sleep. Um, <laughs> that's what you're saying. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just now I just want to tell you the story of Rocky in case you've never heard it. Um, <clears throat> no, just that. Uh, there's an episode of Mario 3, the show, the cartoon show, where Koopa pretends that he's surrendering. They call him Koopa. They don't call him Bowser in this. He's called King Koopa. <laughs> not hey, to, Koopa. <laughs> not to beat a dead Koopa. And uh, uh, and they end up, like, tricking them to go to the castle. At, and the uh, Peach, uh, Princess Toadstool says that um, they're going to they're gonna donate the castle to elderly mushrooms. <laughs> Uh, as a retirement home and then it turns out it's a trick and he's trying to get her to sign over the the kingdom to her and then cheatsy the one of his sons actually tries to cheat koopa out of it and it's a it's a story about lying and so i tell i told tell her that whole story and it turns out like <clears throat> from seeing it a million times as a kid i have almost like autistically like every line memorized i, I can i can recite the whole show to you line by line wow it's weird you ever have that where you like oh. you, you discover some old, <laughs> you discover some old media, and you're like speaking along to every word of it. You're like, this is still stored in my brain somewhere. It's it's yeah. It's like when you get a jingle from like a commercial, and you're like, yeah. I have all of this in my brain. It, it, it's just taking up space. It's if you incredible. if you just like say a couple keys, I'll I'll recite the whole thing to you. It's incredible. <laughs> it's crazy. So, I loved. Norm's uh, documentary is great. You know, he did a Mario three one. It's also awesome. He does for those who don't know, uh, probably everybody who listens to us subscribes to gaming historian because it's all part of the, if you came to us from Cinemassacre, then chances are you like Norm. He, he tends to be like who, who Cinemassacre truth, like puts up as like a, a model YouTube employee. Um, <laughs> and uh, like James needs to, to aspire to this. <laughs> 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 but uh like totally different <laughs> if i was james i'd be kind of pissed off at norm <laughs> like fuck that dude he's never made one poop joke um but uh for those who don't know he he makes these kind of content you know like these long form he only comes out with three or four a year or something much like james should 
and it's it, they're just they're in-depth documentaries about a particular subject so they could go from anywhere from like 40 minutes 30 minutes to an hour and uh they're well researched well written they normally have an interesting kind of angle to them but not like you know it's it's not overly creative it's like a pbs it, he tries to present it like a pbs documentary yeah it's very ken burns style yeah documentary and it's always like like visually rich and just kind of like really solidly made so like if you love super mario world you'll love his super mario world documentary but the thing that stuck out in my mind while watching it was how remarkable it is to think that when mario world came out in japan not like not only was there not a mario world in in america in north america for like two years or something i think it was two years there wasn't a super nes for two years like they couldn't like they 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 were really reluctant because I guess like Japan was doing super well like economically and and the Super Famicom was easily introduced to the market because everybody would buy it. They were demanding more horsepower from their video games. And in the States, they were like, I invested seven hundred dollars in the NES. I am not putting that thing away. It's got I've got a stack yeah. of games I bought my kid. Don't you start selling me and even just that idea of like don't start selling me new Nintendos now. Um yeah, because yeah, yeah the um it was it was just different because uh what was i gonna say the nes was still selling well it was still selling well at the time like they didn't they they just thought it was just going to keep selling keep selling keep selling and they didn't realize like what like sega genesis was was catching up to them they didn't like it was just like you know the good times will keep coming (laughs) this is just our VCR and, that was and Nintendo of America had to promise they're like we're going to keep developing for your NES and they had to like really soft pedal the sell for the Super NES they had to be like this is for super gamers this, this is, is for- not for everybody in fact yeah, don't I was, buy it I was I was, <laughs> I was gonna mention that because it's it's got that thing it's like well the NES it's kind of like an entry console but if you're really into gaming you get the Super Nintendo when, when was the last time you finished an NES game? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. This is a Stairs game. It's like, God. <laughs> yeah. And not, not to mention, like, the, the you know, people outside of Japan didn't even know, um, like, what the Super Famicom was. Like, I, I guess some, you know, totally big-time hobbyists were importing the Super Famicom and stuff. But generally speaking, it was just like a rumor, like, what this thing was. I don't, like, yeah. it's, to me, it's remarkable that, like, years would go by where there's there there's a product in the world that you can very much find out about and like for like most of the population has no idea it exists that they're speculating about it in magazines falsely yeah and how how close like in release the you know mario 3 was to super Mm. mario world it's just like they bang those two masterpieces (laughs) it's it's crazy and, and and he did a good job of framing that too, where he's like, they had just made Mario three and now they had to like innovate on that. And that already like stretched the possibility. You know, Super Mario three is like really hits the nail on the head. <laughs> They're yeah. like, so what do yeah. we do now? Yeah. There was, there was a thing that, um, uh, it was one of the things that he said that, uh, Koji Kondo had said, um, mm. in, in like regards to the music and stuff, but it was like that he felt like he'd composed too much music for Mario three. And it all sort of like took away from like itself. Um, so everything in Super Mario World is based around like the one theme. And it, as a musician, I've never, <laughs> I've never recognized that that it's all oh, yeah. just the same theme being used oh, yeah. in different ways. Because it's a, it's it's really like it, it gets a lot of mileage out of it. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's like it's it's so genius, really. And then it makes the title song stick out a little bit more because yeah, it's like it's the only the, time you hear it. Uh, the map as well, I guess. Dun, 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 oh yeah, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. Do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the one. one. We 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 played it. I've played that that game before. I, I also thought it was kind of interesting to hear that um, Shigeru Miyamoto thought that Mario Three was just a little bit too hard. Hmm. That was his one of his criticisms of it. He was like, "I, I want Mario World to be a little easier than that." Or to or, or or they they thought that like introducing the Star Road might be a, a way to kind of like ramp up the difficulty and you know I guess Miyamoto was really against the idea of of a difficulty setting. He kind of wants the game to like. He wants the, the player to adapt to the dif- difficulty based on the decisions they make. Yeah. Well, that's, or, you know, that's the whole argument is, you know, of like, if, if you've made your game well, 
and mm. the, the, the difficulty is is well measured, right. then you shouldn't have to select easy, normal, hard. Yeah. You just kind of like go into it. But no, I'm 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 not really surprised to hear that because I mean Mario games have gotten sort of like progressively um easier. Yeah. On true. on like a service level anyway. So like that's you true. just kind of for my yeah, money though. They're, I, they're I, a step above like Kirby, you know. Yeah, right. For my money, I, I've always found I think I've always found Mario World to be a little harder than Mario 3 for me. Yeah. I, I yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's it's tough because well Mario 3 has like short levels, like you can like blow through those levels they're so short yeah yeah and so there's like a little bit more like i don't know exploration or something in um super mario world there's like the alternate paths and stuff like that um they've they've, they've got like the different like physics as well haven't they so like yeah. you'll jump but you'll slide a little bit and you know like that kind of thing which they, oh, yeah. they then added in on the super nintendo version of like the mario 3 and all the rest of it yeah it was uh, that was actually probably my favorite part of the documentary is watching them start from mario 3 and kind of like progress into mario world like their prototype for mario world was essentially a souped up mario 3 and then they were self-critical they were like it's just mario 3 like we got to innovate further and what i liked about that is remember there was that huge nintendo leak like last year so they had all these assets from versions of super mario 3 from that or super mario world from that leak which is was a godsend to his documentary yeah because, right right because you had all those assets you could show the progression of like how weird and like reptilian yoshi looked and yeah. now he, he like keeps going yeah that yoshi should is that yoshi memed that prototype yoshi that that feels like it should be kind of right up there with like original uh movie version of sonic and st- you know, <laughs> freakish multiverse uh versions of things you know and love all the original Are, movie version of yoshi you know they should they should make a, a Yoshi movie with a with a poorly received first trailer. <laughs> Can you play that Mario World Mario Four prototype? Is that playable? That thing? I don't know if it's playable or not. I would have to look it up. I don't know. There it, there are some things that are playable in that huge leak, but um, it's 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 probably going to turn into one of those things, isn't it? Like you've got people who've put like the Space World demos, of, mm. like stuff for the N sixty four together. Like as best as the can and stuff. So yeah, yeah. The Satellaview Maybe. games they they like stitched together because they were oh, like that's cool. Um, because that that's what the Zelda Satellaview third quest is like, just stitched together. Because it was like DLC back in the day. Because you got like one half of the game mm. at one port point of the week, and then the next you get the next part. So you have to like stitch them all together. It's really crazy. yeah. Yeah, well, this you know the the thought of it stresses me out because I, for the retro stuff, even things like the Satella view, it's kind of easy to piece it back together again. But once once you get into modern gaming and DLC, like downloadable stuff that went offline and multiplayer stuff that you'll never get back again, you start to just be like, there's there's just some experiences that are permanently gone. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm worried Disney about that with the figures. <laughs> yeah, Lost time. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.